the chair will call you up to speak. Okay. Okay. Um, it's up to the chair on where, where she pulls. Oh. What are we getting? Freaking! I ended up. I've been gonna put it in my shop for probably ten years, and I finally did last year, and it's nice. But for the amount of hot, yeah, for the amount of you know days you really get, I mean it's nice. We go in there now in the morning, it's sixty degrees, and the humidity stays at fifty percent yeah, all day. It's a big Perfect. All right. It is 6.30. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Let's just take care of our minutes right off the bat. We had um, public minutes and non-public minutes from Wednesday, July 6th, and we had the minutes from Monday, uh, July 18th. We did not have a meeting last week. There was no quorum. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any changes or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Oh, hang on a second. I'm sorry. Yep, okay. I'm just going to cross out Teresa's name. I think you put it there because you thought we were having Rather a meeting last week. Yes. That is exactly why I did that. That's fine. But all of a sudden, I looked at it, and I said, no, I was here at that meeting. Lindsay, is your mic on? My mic is on. I am just not on top of it. I'm partially deaf in one it's, ear. So, you're but. fine. The heat's just taking it right out of me. I know I'm not alone. I know. So the sixth has been approved. The 6th and the 18th, yes. And there was no meeting on the, what was it, the 12th? 13th. 13th, thank you. All right, we have a couple of things. Actually, what I'd like to do, um, we have a couple of things in the folder, but we do have some people in the audience, so I'd kind of like to maybe take care of that business first. Um, so the Conan Library is here today to discuss um, an air quality control system for the building. Um, and Mitty Johnson is joining us, and I give her an opportunity to take the mic, please. Thank you. So I'm Mitty Johnson. As you heard, I'm currently the chair of the Conant Public Library Board of Trustees, and uh, we're here respectfully to request permission to uh, get an architectural report and some construction estimates to cost out uh, climate control for the library. Uh, 
or David Lank said, bad libraries build collections, good libraries build services, great libraries build communities, and we are wanting to have a really great library for the people of Winchester. Uh, to do that, we have a couple of goals. One is to make the library more usable, and the other is to preserve our collections. So, as you're probably all too aware if you're a library user, uh, the library is horribly hot in the summer. The upstairs uh, second floor is not heated in the winter, and it's too dry in the winter, too humid in the summer. Uh, we close the library when it's over 82 degrees. To be fair to our employees, uh, they can often have projects they can do working from home. Nobody who knows our library will go into it on a hot day because they know it's going to be hot. So, for example, just uh, last June, uh, 2021, we closed three times, and that was in June, not July and August. It was 85 inside on the 7th of June, 2021. On the 28th, it was 86 inside, and on the 30th, it was 87 degrees. Now, we also want to use the upstairs for programs, for research, for access to our historical collections, and that's not really possible without climate control. The other goal to preserve the collections, we, as you know, obviously, have books, DVDs, CDs, microfiche. We also have a large collection of archival photographs. We have the original Washington Library, leather-bound volumes that were the original volumes of the library, historic musical instruments, most of them made in Winchester, Civil War records, all kinds of archival and historic material, uh, costumes, things that are decaying or at risk of decay um, or in poor repair because of lack of climate control. So, the trustees have had uh, a vision for a three-part plan. The first part was to ask the town to repair the leak in the roof uh, to prevent further damage to the collection and to paint the upstairs so the collections could be moved around without put in better uh, shape to be usable without having to move them two or three times while the place was painted. So thanks to the town that has been done, uh, climate control is the second part, and then the third part would be to make the second floor accessible under the provisions of the American Disabilities with Disabilities Act, and that would mean a longer-term plan for an elevator. Now, as far as climate control goes, we did several years ago have WV Engineering do an engineering report to look at climate control for the library. Um, at and uh, they reported to us at the end of 2018 their findings and also an estimated cost at that time. Now, obviously, that's so far out of date that it's not uh, probably worth talking about. However, they did say at that time that it would be somewhere between $200,000 and $250,000 on architectural and site plan, they guessed at that time would add another 6% to the cost. So we're talking about a significant amount of money, and in a minute I will talk about how we think we can do that without significant uh, pain to our taxpayers. Uh, also, um, they pointed out that a new system would increase efficiency because a current heating system is not properly insulated. Also, we need insulating curtains or shades for the windows, which would be several thousand dollars to have them custom fitted. Those are old windows. Uh, you can't really replace them without ruining the historic value, but we could make them more efficient. As far as insulation for the building envelope itself, the engineer did say that this type of building often cannot have any blown-in insulation because there isn't the space in the wall. And uh, so he was, uh, he didn't drill into the wall, but that was 
a guesstimate with his experience with that kind of building. So um, insulating the climate control system, insulating the windows would, would be important. Um, <clears throat> and then longer term, an elevator. This is another reason we need an architectural consultation because you don't want to put in a climate control system and suddenly discover the one place you can reasonably put an elevator has covered up your vents or your ducts or whatever. Um, and also, we're really concerned with preserving the integrity of that beautiful building. As you know, it has a ship's hull ceiling that is just gorgeous, it has a lot of beautiful woodwork. Um, and we also have some shafts, chimney shafts, and some ductwork that exists that we would want a construction firm to be able to make the best use of to avoid reinventing the wheel. Um, and so the elevator also we would want to go to the basement floor. Um, and so there's a, that's another reason to talk to an architect long, long, long term. It would give us a way to increase library space or meeting space for the town without increasing the footprint. As you know, to increase the footprint of the, either the library or the town hall would be quite difficult um, because of their proximity to each other. So, how to pay for this? Uh, for the construction work itself, um, the town trustees of trust funds are agents for a trust fund that is unrestricted. We have several restricted trust funds that are for the purchase of books, but there is one called the Conan Trust Fund, unrestricted, currently with $659,000 in it. And it seems to the Board of Trustees that we could use a substantial portion of that money without any pain to the taxpayers at all for putting in that climate control system. And the plan would be then to leave a chunk of the money in place, not to use it all. We don't think, based on prior estimates, of course, we know they're out of date, but we would leave a chunk in to then continue to grow for future needs, um, which would also be, we've talked to Mike Coop and Mim Johnson, that would also be their desire, as well as trustees of trust funds, to see that part of it grow. Um, as far as the estimates and architectural fees that we would have to pay, we did note that the town had put aside money uh, for the roof and masonry repair. In, even with the painting that was done, there's still 121000 left over um, for the Conant Library. Um, that would be what we would like to use for the fees for the estimates and the architect. And then the elevator, which would be further out once the climate control was in place. I think there is no purpose to putting in an elevator to go to an unusable space. Um, but once that would be done, then we could look into an LCHIP grant or another type of a grant. Um, of course, there's a lot of competition for those. They only pay 50% of the cost, but it would certainly reduce pain to the taxpayers. Um, it would pay a percentage. Um, and again, the way the roof was done, you know, so much set aside and then so much set aside another year, um, just like we do for fire trucks or what have you, that could potentially be done for an elevator as well. Um, we have also discovered, thanks to Mike Coop, that the New Hampshire Department for Historic uh, Resources does have smaller grants available for preservation of the actual artifacts themselves. So for example, repair to our forte piano or those types of things that would, if we could get one of those grants, those types of things to make the space uh, good for programming would not be uh, affecting the taxpayers. 
Uh, so I'm happy to answer questions to the best of my ability. Um, we do respectfully request the town allow us to seek an architectural evaluation, an architectural plan, and construction estimates to be paid from those existing monies, and then we can bring a plan um, for approval to go ahead. Are there questions? I have one quick question. Is there any other questions from the board? I, I have some. Yeah. All right. I was just going to quickly ask, do you know the last time that the, um, the unrestricted fund was used? Apparently, it has never been touched. That's what I wondered. It was established with $500 and has grown over the years. I think it dates from 1907, from what Mike Coop said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's not been touched. I mean, our hope, and again, we don't know till we get estimates, our hope would be to leave a quarter of a million dollars in there to, over time, grow again. To grow I just again. didn't know what the, what the return really was on that trust, but that's definitely a question that can be followed up on. Um, Herb, you want to go ahead? Uh, my question is about the elevator. You have an elevator over there now, correct? We have a lift, yes, that goes um, from the back entrance to the main floor. Doesn't that also go to the cellar? I mean, in there, no, a way I mean, into the cellar there? There, Yes, there is a way into the cellar there, but there are some steps down. They couldn't put a handicap ramp down there? Or that something? would be a possibility. And fix I mean, that. We, would, we would have to see. Um, you have a, a, a rise over run regulation for ramps, but, so we would have to see, but yes, possibly. Um, the, the way that little addition for the back entrance is, uh, it, that only goes to the main floor, it does not go to the second floor. Um, and whether it would be feasible to just send it up or whether an elevator that went to the second floor would have to be in a different place is something we would have to find out. One of our concerns is not to block a lot of windows because the windows are very beautiful and also they provide much needed light on that second floor. Um, we have one little room that's already been set up as a research room that has, you know, a window that provides a lot of good light. Can't really be used yet because of the lack of climate control and elevator and so forth. A lot of people, I should add, have, have spoken to me or to other trustees about uh, older people or, uh, or even people in their 40s have said, you know, we used to go to a lot of programs on the second floor, they had talks, they had concerts and so forth, we really like to be able to do that again. So it is, it is something that we're not questioning people about it. It's something people are coming to us and saying. So I just want to note that. Are there are other questions. Um, you're, so I just wanted to. You talked about a lot of things that needed to be done. Um, mm -hmm. Your exact ask right now is just for a climate control system um, plan, or a um, you're looking to start. Um, inquiries into companies to get final quotes? Uh, yeah, well, yes, the plan and then estimates based on that plan. So you're just So seeking... the town has to put it out to bid because the town owns the building envelope, the trustees control the collections. Of so, the... so you're just seeking for the town to put it out to bid at this point? No, I, I think you're... The, the motion would be for the architectural uh, assessment to determine the best process for the climate control, correct? Correct. And then um, we thought if we could get a few estimates, then, uh, and they were in line uh, with, with what we thought cost-wise, we could then ask the town to put it out to bid. Got it. Thank so, you. It was, so it's those two things we're asking. Perfect. There are two pots I, of. Oh, I'm sorry, Teresa. Go ahead. 
you have six hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars in the unrestricted funds you talked about one hundred and twenty four thousand dollars left after the roof what what was that what was with that taken what was that is that on a capital reserve? Yes. Yes, yes. it's a capital and reserve it, fund. What is the cap, how is the capital reserve actually worded? Can we use that money? You're asking us to utilize that money to pay for the um, engineering estimate or your estimates? Can, yeah. can yes. we actually do that? I don't know. I think Amy would have to answer that question or Mike would have to answer that question. Could I'm the capital asking, reserve asking, fund, is it restricted or could it be used it, for that? Well, you're asking us to use, utilize what's left, the $121,000. No, ju that. well, just enough to get, cover the architectural plan and the estimates. And my question then would be, <clears throat> the way that the capital reserve is written, are we authorized to do that? Right. That I don't know. No. The one twenty one. One twenty six. I think it's one twenty one. We have to look. We don't know off the top of our heads. I'm not sure if it was specifically started for the blue scan, but the general names of Correct. That's my concern because I'm not going to vote for any money being expended right. hey, from Matt, that capital from reserve that capital until reserve. Okay. I see the what went to the vote is and that we could actually utilize that money. Matt, could you pull up the public report from 2012? Uh, it's not on there. Oh, it's not. It doesn't go back that far. Okay. Oh, it doesn't go back that far. I was just wondering if we could not have to move anywhere for you, Amy. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I assume it's, that the second it, floor is warmer than the first it, floor. It, 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 my office underneath the mailbox. Um, I do have a, another question, which is just a tiny bit off topic. Um, I did notice when I was out there um, when we had the food festival that, that the stairs on the side are kind of su sunken in and cracked. Yes. That's um, another well as one of the windows up top. Is that part of the other grants that you're looking for to repair those things? Yeah, I, I think we're going to have to seek some money to, uh, to repair those because they are sunken in and they're getting to be dangerous. This will be the front steps you're referring to. The between town hall, oh no, between the library and the park. The gazebo. The gazebo. The gazebo side, the side stairs. Yeah, the front steps, yeah. That, those are the front ones? Those are the front ones. The, the back entrance was added later, yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. oh, oh, the ones that go up to that side door? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think that's mainly a fire exit. Yeah. 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 I would request that we at least, you know, rope them off or something for the meantime. They're, they're pretty darn bad. This is, I should say, she was, <laughs> you know, this is Jennifer Howe, who's our board tre treasurer. Hi, Jen. So, she may be able to answer questions I can't. Yeah, if Henry could look at them and see what would need to be done. Yeah, oh, they're, they're pretty, yeah. they're giant slabs of granite, just like, I, I would just, yeah. like, not even to fix them at this point, just to rope them off for safety reasons. Right. Well, I don't think we can rope I off a fire we exit, but. Right. We, we could really. put a sign on the door, and I think there may be one that says emergency exit only. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the front steps, I think, are, are, they look like they're sandstone, and they're quite yeah. sunk in, too, and that's been a concern of the trustees. But um, um, my, other, my other comment was just that thank you for your detailed report. That was very wonderful. Um, my other comment would just be I think that um, a climate control system in the library would be a huge improvement. Um, especially as we all sit here on a, in an unair conditioned town hall right now, um, it would it would act um, in two ways. It would act as a cooling station for residents of the town on a hot day, to, um, and then it would also engage more um, uh, foot traffic to the library. So I think it's a kind of a win-win. 
at that I, point. And I think um, once the upstairs was accessible, smaller meetings could be held there. Uh, the other thing is we have been a little concerned, and it hasn't happened, but you know, a lot of radio stations or TV stations put out generic announcements on days like today. Go to your public library to cool off. Right. And uh, you know, they're out of the frying pan and into the fire. We actually closed the library at noon today. Um, you didn't they, send your guys home at noon, did you, Dale? Mm-hmm. Uh, He's like, I'm like, like well, I'm too hot that, to answer. It, the uh, type of work that they do on programming and things, um, they both had things they could work from home on the computer to set things up, so they were still working. It's more but about the, the, the public coming in versus... Oh, right, and why should we keep them there when absolutely nobody is going to come in on a day right. like today? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, there are plenty of residents who do not have air conditioning and or can afford it, so I think um, offering a cooling place for them on very hot days is, is you know, a great public service that we can have. Here's the answer to Teresa's question. The purpose of repairs and future upgrades, structural and mechanical, to the Ponent Library. So that looks, I that say yes. Of, that, that fits in there. I say. Structural so it's and mechanical. repairs and future upgrades, did you say? Yes. Mechanical and structural. structural. Okay. So I think an architectural slash engineering um, evaluation that's going to determine the future structural pieces of the library certainly falls within that Warren article that or that capital reserve there. You don't have any estimates on the actual engineering study then? I mean, We do, but it, this was done, I think it was done at the beginning of 2018 or the end of 2017, and we had a hard time getting a report from them. The man finally came in. Did you say it was 6%? He finally came on November 13th, 2018 to go over the report with us. And so, um, for the, uh, and he broke it out like what for the heat for the main floor, what for air conditioning for the second floor and so forth into different pieces. But basically the entire thing would be between, uh, at that time, 200,000 and 253,000 an additional three to 5,000 at that time for the humidifier that would be needed in the winter for upstairs. And uh, he said um, it's a, a site plan or, or architectural detail would be probably six, up to 6%, which at that time would have been 15,000. Yeah, I'm thinking okay, like 25. Project, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, probably easily, uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Do you, right. Do you know because that these the hard type, figures are out of date. Do you know the type of system they were possibly specking or that you didn't? Well, they were talking about oil heat and they were, the building itself is just under 8,000 square feet. And so they were talking about two furnaces with a better insulated system and uh, take and just convert existing radiators. Um, and it, it would be forced hot water. Um, it could be zoned, he said, uh, and air conditioning for the whole building, three air handling units and duct work and outside units to discharge the hot air. Um, for the first floor, ducts in the basement with floor registers by the windows. For the second floor, I mean, for what we paid them, um, it was very disappointing because he didn't really know, which is why we really need an architect, he was an engineer, like how to put that in without ruining the architecture of right. the second floor. Certainly it can be done. It's done all the time, but he didn't know how. Um, and he thought that the, the most desirable for the structure of the building would be something zoned um, and two furnaces, one system for upstairs, one for downstairs, would be more desirable. Um, and then, as you said, the humidifier for the winter. Um, 
Obviously, we don't need it in the summer. All right. And then for cooling, they, they just spec like a, um, central, just a air. central air condition? Yes. He said 13.8 tons or less. Uh, it, it would, it, the, part of the goal would be to lower the humidity um, so that you have a less damage to the collection, but also uh, subjectively it feels cooler. I guess I have two follow-up questions now that you explain that. Thank you. Um, the first would be, um, given the additional, you know, um, cost with additional boilers and um, if you're going to do forced um, a central heating system, does the library have enough in their budget to cover the rising fuel costs as well as the electricity costs? My second question, just so we don't, you know, just because it's easier, um, how many um, firms did you look at and then um, did you get any quotes for heat pumps and uh, mini splints? You know, so we just had um, WV Engineering do the engineering report and this, the report itself uh, and, and how that firm was engaged happened before was just before I went on the board, so I'm not clear on that. I'm glad you mentioned electric. He did say the electrical system would have to be upgraded significantly. Um, so he did not talk about heat pumps and um, he just talked about oil and forced hot water. Now in 2018, it was a little different climate for oil. Everybody was all excited about fracking and so on. Oh. Yeah, I feel like we're, yeah, if you don't mind, I feel like we're really kind of getting into the weeds of what that, what that report might look like and we're kind of trying to base some of our decision making on a report that's a little outdated. So I, I think the first, the first thing is we, we clearly need an updated engineering um, an architectural review so that the library can even know if the 650 or a portion of that is going to be, be what they need and they can bring that to us further. Um, and clearly from 2018, that's not enough information for us to decide if we need, should move forward with such a large project anyway. So I think the first order of business really is making, approving and now that we know we can take it from that capital um, approving if, the, if it is the will of the board to move forward with, with the quote now, or with, excuse me, the, the um, engineering plan. I have a kind of just a point of order. I'm just thinking about like the beach plan and you know, would we put out to bid the- Like feasibil feasibility study? Yeah. Because first we would You could just put out an RFQ at this right, point, we would so do. that way we don't have to spend any money on that at all. That. Right. Because That's we're going to solicit offers for the correct. for the the Study. plan yep. itself. Yep. yep. So that would be the I think that's the only thing on and then we'll come back. Yep. We can review so, the company with the board with the trustees. So Mitty, so you know an RFQ is where we ask it's a request for quote. So we'll put out um, what exactly you're looking to be quoted on. It'll go out there, people will come back to us um, and say that you might get some inquiries, can we come look at the library, they want to do an assessment of the of whatever's going on there. Um, but I, I'm sure you could work with Carrie to figure out exactly what you want to put in that RFQ, exactly what you're looking for, heating, cooling, things of that nature. It'll probably go out to some oil companies, some, you know, um, well, whoever sees it, um, maybe a couple of heat pump companies, things of that nature. And then once we get those all in, we'll be able to assess, look at those, assess them, and then move on to the next step. Okay, that sounds great. We did want to consult an architect because of the, the future desire for an elevator that goes to the second floor. And so, that so would be just as a, my only point of, of reference is, is like when we did the, the beach, and that was one firm that was able to complete, right. you know, all specs of, of that projected project. You know, right. in that particular case, there, were, right. there was EPA follow-up, there was um, architectural details, and there was also um, all of the engineering components. So, Correct. 
and samples. So I, I think this might be a little bit different because it's heating and cooling and then architecture. If we go with one firm, it's going to be an, a lot more money because one firm is going to outsource to another firm. And I think we're that gonna, still goes back to you're putting out the RFQ and you're going to let. But it should be two separate RFQs, one for heating and cooling, one for architecture. So I'm just going to throw out my concern with that particular process is in this, in this case, the Conant library trustees become basically with Carrie the general contractor or overseer of both of those plans. Whereas if there is a firm that is able to provide, they are responsible for all of those various pieces. I would be concerned that we don't have the, um, not the, 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 all of the professional wherewithal within those functions mm -hmm. to oversee two quotes. No, I, I understand your concern and specifically in those RFQs we can put down that they have to provide that project management level of experience um, rather than outsourcing it to another firm that's going to then outsource it again. So that could be included in the RFQ. So it, it just takes us out of the equation. Yeah, yeah, We're just Gary. making a decision. I understand what you're saying, but at the same point, I don't want an architect and then another oil company coming in and they're disagreeing on what they should put in there. I really, I like Lindsay's idea of going with one firm. It's going to come in here and give us options of what type of heating, what type of air, and then the next step would be reaching out to the Davis oils, the, the plumbers, and the heat, all those people separately. I, I hear what can you're I, saying. Can I just yeah. add one? The yeah. reason we were thinking an architect first was because we didn't want to reinvent the wheel with the duct work and then have them come in and say, if you want to put in an elevator, you've got to move everything around, and then that's going to cost an extra $50,000 six, seven years down the road if we go to look at doing an elevator. Correct. So that was, that was the reason. Get the heating and cooling ductwork, whatever it is they have to do, in so it would be com back compatible with a future. Right. Um, yeah, so you would be looking not even for an architect at this point, it would be a structural engineer to make sure that everything is, you know, correct. And then once you have the structural engineer analysis, then you could also um, put out the bid for um, the heating and the cooling. I mean, if the ductwork is existing, everything is lighter than it was. 40, 50 years ago. Um, so it, you, you're really not adding more of a load because the, the furnace goes in the basement and they're all, already lighter than they were. So I don't see that a structural engineer isn't really going to look at anything other than um, uh, you're not adding load. It's not like you're adding any weight to the structure. So it's, it shouldn't be, it, it's just going to be cheaper in the long run if you do it the other way, in my opinion. Where, where, yeah, well, we would like the plan for where the elevator would go at the same time. I guess our thought was an architect is very familiar with different kinds of heating and cooling and where ductwork goes in a building and all those kinds of things. We're not wanting, obviously, any uh, silver ductwork across the wooden ceiling and that kind of thing. And, and the engineer that we had do this report, when we questioned him on that, he said, gee, I don't know how you do that. So that was not encouraging. <laughs> right. Maybe that was just him. But. Um, is there a motion to move forward with, um, this is going to be to really bid out the project from I'd make a motion to um, put out a RFQ for um, the scope of work that is needed to be done at the Conant Library. Um, it could either be from one whole firm or from separate firms. I think that's a good compromise. Yep. <coughs> I agree. So is that your motion? That's my motion. And to utilize the... Um, the capital reserve that we just confirmed can be used for that, the 121, 121, 126 is left. Well, the, the RFQ doesn't, isn't going to cost us any money, so it's just a quote at this point. We don't need to actually spend money. Noted. So 
Sorry, that was me thinking. It's just a little. It's hot. I get it. Slower. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a motion to put out the RFQ, um, whether it with the with the scope of work to include all engineering and architectural needs as identified by the library trustees. Um, I will second that. And just for additional discussion, we that phase of it isn't the the cost side of it. The cost side will come once those bids come in and then we can move forward from there. Yep. There's a motion and a second. Is there any additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion passes. Um, of course, I, it's exciting. Thank you folks for your, your hard work. Hey, you know, if you need help with your RFQ, just please let me know. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's, it, it sounds like you have your your, your needs and what you're looking for in terms of your kind of like your three part plan and what that climate control looks like and with the <coughs> second floor accessibility. So that really just needs to be put into, you know, that document so it can go out. Perfect. Okay. There's nothing else from the Conant Library. Um, Amy, did you want to? Are we doing? Non-public. Non-public. Excuse me. Moving on to our folder. I see Rick in the corner there. First up is we have a couple of uh, leak detection survey letters that went out, um, and there's a handy little there's a handy little sticky note here, Rick, that says that you can speak to these letters if any of us had any questions, I suppose. But it looks like you did a leak detection and you found a couple of properties on Lakeshore that are going to need to be addressed. What does that mean exactly, if you wouldn't mind? It's not just on Lakeshore, it's on King No, there's Road. another one on Ashwillet. And in Ashwillet. Yeah, 61 Ashwillet's yeah. kind of a complicated one. We've been trying to get in there for, I would say, at least three years. We believe there was, we believe there was a leak there before. We did some work there probably four or five years ago. We actually changed, we put a brand new curb stop, went all the way back to the main, put a, a saddle on and a new corp and everything. We still heard it, so obviously when we had this leak detection, I had the, the gentleman doing the survey try to hone in what's going on. Um, again, I'm trying to bring these people to the table. Some of these have been, you know, some of them are new, some are old. This is six, 61's an old one. So I'd like to see what we could do about if I can get her to the table, let us in. The meter's been stalled for, for a long time. Uh, maybe we can help her out, but I'd like to have a conversation with her first. But unfortunately, I, I believe that I'd have to ask the board, as the letter says, if I cannot get a response, we're going to have to do something as far as termination or something. I, I don't know how you all feel about that, to get something with 61. The other, the other two, I believe, will probably respond to us. Um, again, these are these are leaks that are on the customer side of the curb stop, uh, but they're very close. To, they're not a couple of them. They're, they're right within the right of way. 61 seems to be maybe under the foundation. It's a slab, mm. so I'm not. It could be a little bit complicated. Nothing that can't be fixed. But like I said, it could be it could be something financially burdened to that person. But if I can't bring them to the table, I don't know how else to bring them here to to help to solve the problem. So those, that's why. I, we need to generate those letters, get them out. Um, again, I do not have the report on hand. I'm going by the verbal report that I received from the um, from the gentleman who did a survey, but we will be getting that. We get like over 100,000 gallons a day we're losing. So um, I have worked out with the highway department if the weather permits. Next week we'll start trying to clean up some of the stuff that's within our right of ways or on our side. Um, Rick, can you just explain, you just mentioned that you're losing about 100 gallons of water a day from the 100, leak? 100,000. Just thousand. from one leak? Yes, like wow. 61, he gave me an estimate. I, I, will, I will pass the report on to you. I've asked for the report. 100,000 gallons? A day we're losing, yeah. Now again, we're, we're in a system with 400,000, a 40% leakage rate, and we average probably 300, right now we're around 340,000 gallons a day. What? Um, some days we're peaking at 440. I mean, it's dry. People are watering the gardens. You know, There's a lot of pressure on the system right now. And, and I'm just now that's, just that's what I'm it, curious. That's what that's it is. Ton. That's why I come to you all the time trying to 
you know, barter and beg, plead, whatever we can do about fixing these water mains and replacing them. I mean, we have transite pipe in the ground every 13 feet. There's a coupling with two oil rings. No, no, no fittings, no nothing. Every, every, when they turn corners, they trans, you know, they just deflect the pipe. So, as you know. would you say, the majority is from main lines or? Looks services right now. That's what it looks like. Like I said, I we've got one on um, for on the Oamarosa farm on Forest Lake Road. Um, we're going to go after that. That one sounds like it's the corp out of the main. So we, I'm told it's a pretty good lead. Again, I don't have that report. He right, gave right. me some. He gave me some numbers, Natalie. I I will pass it on to the board so you guys can Thank look you. at it. And I'd like to. Sure. I'd like to make a motion. Yep. It, the on. letters are pretty self-explanatory. I'd I like agree. to make a motion to approve the letters yes. that were written by the water department. That. There's a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? I'm just trying to educate myself and possibly yeah. the people that are listening as to why yes. we're doing this before we actually approve them. That's all I'm trying to do. Right. So and, thank and the you. The critical right. part that we're losing this water in the ground that we're trying to, we just had this, the state, the state provided us a free leak detection. Um, it has a value, but part of the part of the agreement is that we're going to fix the leaks that are that have been detected. So that's what I'm, I'll be working on now in the next couple of weeks with the help of the highway to try to to try to you know bring our leak. You know we've been through this before. We can bring it down. Hopefully we get around 260, 280, you know 100, 200 thousand gallons a day. You know and again it'll slide back up again. But we'll I'll, 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 we will definitely apply for the leak detection again. It's just going to be an ongoing process with our with our old system. Thank you, Thank Rick. You. Thank there's you a, very much, Rick. There's a motion and a second. No additional discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. There were a couple of other things in the file from Rick, actually. Sorry that you walked all the way over there. Um, this was some, you had a couple of questions with regard yeah. to the ARPA funds for projects. Yeah. Well, first, I, we, the influent pumps. I think I had, I had spoke to the board here a while back. We've reached 50,000 hours on, on both of the original influent pumps that were put, put in in 2014. So the board had approved two years ago to buy a brand new influent pump. So we installed the influent pump. So the first pump has gone to the shop and the report has come back and it needs a little, almost $7,000 worth of work. Mm -hmm. um, I did not give you the price. I did get a price before I went on vacation of $28,000 for a new, new pump. So I would, I would anticipate the pump that's, the, the last pump that's running right now, that's gonna be about the same cost. So I don't know if the, how the board feels. It's something that we, we, I need to move on now because you can see a big difference between the pump that's, that's brand new and the one that's not, that we left in that's got the 50,000 hours on it. So I would like to recondition both these pumps so we'll be good for another eight years or another 50,000 hours and that'll leave us one spare on the, on the floor brand, you know, with a brand new impeller in it. And again, these have, they, they have a complete service report. I can pass it on. I don't know if that was part of that, if that came over. I think I just asked Carrie, I don't know if the service report's there, but it does come with a service report. So when the, when the, when the pump is rebuilt, it'll be brand new seals, everything. And these these are these pumps have seal detect they have uh, leak detection in the seal chambers and everything. So if the pump does if the seal does fail, you know the, it shuts the pump down. So it's kind of a critical situation. To, I just want to rotate this stuff out to keep us keep us you know. So and you're have, looking to take that from ARPA funds? I'm just asking if the board would we ha I, we have to make a we have to make a move. Um, like I said, I, I we transitioned this pump out about two months ago and I finally got the, the service report back this week. This is a regular repair that will need to happen every couple of years? Um, it's based on, now they, they, no, the, the manufacturers about every 50,000 hours the pump should come out and be, should have a service report done on it. So, so I'm basing it on that we were reaching 50,000. Obviously, as an operator, I've, I've, we've seen the flow, we've seen the, the, you know, the gallons per minute of the pump you know, drop down. So basically the pump's running more in frequency. Um, but again, yes, the answer to your question, yes, it would be like a regular, yeah. instead of buying a brand new pump. So, so sorry. Are you I was going? just gonna say my, my, my thought process overall is I would, I would much rather see how that works into your regular budget if available. I understand that this year there are a lot of projects going on and so it might not be available, but if that's a known expense for the future, I'd really like to see that in the regular budget because right. you know uh, the ARPA I, is I like thinking about the ARPA all about the one time 
you know, right. a lot of one time. What can what what can we do this one time that we might not ever be able to do again? I, and I this sounds like get, yeah. yeah. I'm just basing on our our last budget came in yeah. very very close. Yeah. And I'm I'm already looking at because of the new permit and I, I gave the board estimates for our, all the PFOS testing we had. Yeah. It was like 1,200. Now it's coming in at 1,700. Um, and then the, the the sludge requirements that went up over. I mean, we're seeing costs that are really rising again. And I can tell you, I was called over vacation. Chlorine's an issue. There might not be any. You know, vendors. People are searching for for new vendors to get chlorine, and vendors are not taking on new customers. And the prices are. You know, they're they're getting very volatile right now. So. That, that's why I'm here. That's my explanation. I, I'm, no, no, thank you, Rick. Yeah, yeah. no, thank you, Rick. I, Lindsay, I agree with you. I would like you. I mean, 50,000 hours when they first installed it, which was... 2014, yeah. 2014, I mean, that so should. I mean, if we so could, years, if you could take maybe like 5,000 a year, 3,000 a year out. So, I mean, is fit, that 50,000 hours, you think it would be less than? I mean, it's hard to predict. Well, fifty thousand. It looks like we got. We need a complete new. It, well, the, basically, the report said that the, the impeller's worn. It needs to be changed. Yeah. So right. that's that's basically the most, not the most important part of the pump, but it's obviously for for your pumping efficiency. That's that's what's going to. And be. and for the rest of the pump, what what do you see that for maintenance? Well, it all it all it all checked out good, Natalie. Okay. So I mean, I, I can tell you our. For history of these type of pumps, sometimes the volute wears out, or sometimes the stator, as far as electrical motor goes. But they tell me everything's in good shape; it does not need any other parts right now. So this this time around, all we're going to need is is a is the new impeller seal kit. Um, again, like I said, the, I I do know we bought a new pump just for the public at twenty two thousand dollars two years ago, and I'm being told it's twenty eight thousand dollars right now. Yeah. Um, this is a this is a a product that you can't get off the shelf it has to be pre-ordered. It's usually eight weeks plus. It comes from Sweden. It's a um, it's Exum carries it. It's a flight pump. Just yeah, no. for, Thank um, you, Rick. I would just again. Echo so the the pump said, repair yeah. is a is a necessary, but then there's also this other something in here about um, an OIT yeah, control new, panel replacement. Oper, is that what I'm looking at? The yeah, operator interface terminal. Yep. Now, I had sent this to you last year, and I yes. requested it. And I, again, the reason it's in front of you that I finally i have been working on trying to have them requote this. Again, just so the board can see, and I apologize, you don't have the other one. It's gone up $20,000 from last year. Again, we have no... For us, if there's a water break, um, limited personnel, you have no idea how much water's in the tank unless someone goes all the way to the north end of town, figures out what's going on. If we have the jockey pumps around, it's all going to be done there. Again, I, I've been, I, would, so, I would hope somewhere in the future that we could you know, move up into the day of having some kind of remote access to our controls, at least one, one certified person, um, and know what's going on all the time. Uh, basically, this would this would do is bring all programs to one operator interface terminal at the plant. Obviously, we need to get a the well signal from, we have a repeater up here, but we need to get it over, or another radio over there and an antenna, and obviously some some more hardware. And um, What was the cost of that, Lindsay? It's, it's 48,150. Yeah, 48, yeah. I was just looking, the quote is good for 30 days. Yeah from the date, which is July 19th. Um, Rick, if you wouldn't mind, I think that the board might just want a, a, a little time to noodle that one over. No, that's fine. I just want to And I'm kind of yeah, just yeah. in thinking about prioritizing, but yeah. I'm kind of thinking that the one, the pump and repair there is is, is a vital. Everything's we, important, I understand, yeah. It but just, I, I'm just yeah. wondering if, if, you know, is your recommendation that we make a move on that today versus I, well, the YAPA yeah. funds aren't even going to be at, available for the second yeah. until the end of August. Yeah. So right. he's going to have to make another estimate. Absolutely. I just wanted to bring that to you so it's everyone's okay. try to, you know, just if there's any possibility. Just, is, that, is that the only quote that you got to? Well, it is because they have all our programs. But that, again, we're dedicated. We're staying all Allen Bradley. Now, the operator, operator interface terminal, I like to stay with that. But obviously, sometimes we price out of that because those terminals are so expensive, Natalie. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Again, long, long as it could, we need to, long as it can handle we need to move all our programs. I'm pass out would, here, too. Yeah. Yes. You OK, Jan? 
All right, we're just going to take a slight recess right yeah. now. Thank you.